So we are Snacks Printing LLC and we made the 3D printed lamp. Our project had kind of three main uh, purposes and the first would be to create a functional uh, desktop lamp. So we didn't want to do a miniature size, we wanted to make sure that it was uh, the size of your average desk lamp. We also wanted to um, use only extrusion printers so that we could learn those processes a little bit more um, since we focus on that a lot in the course. And we also wanted to make um, a kind of a print at home lamp where uh, we could upload our parts to Thingiverse and other people could print out their own versions of the lamp and their own materials um, on their own extrusion printers at home. So we had three design goals, and those can be broken down into uh, design, function, and printing. So for the design, like I mentioned before, uh, we wanted to be able to print using only 3D extrusion printers. And uh, we also wanted to accommodate for different materials. So on ours, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, we used a couple different materials through it. Um, but if you wanted to do a cheaper lamp, you could also just buy one reel of material and then print only using that. For function, we wanted to make sure everything was the adequate size um, for the lamp to work properly and to be the size of your average desk lamp. So the base, the connectors, and the lampshade, we wanted all those to definitely uh, work fluidly with each other. And then for printing, we wanted to have obviously good quality prints, but we wanted to make sure that everything prints within 15 hours as well per part so that um, you weren't waiting more than a day for a part to finish. We wanted a cool and stylish design with a lampshade, so we printed it with translucent PETG filament to adapt to the changing colors of the light. We also used an LED light bulb to emit less heat than a traditional light bulb to make sure that the lampshade wouldn't warp. The lampshade connector was designed to support the weight of the lampshade and the light bulb itself with a snap fit connection into the lampshade. It's also designed to accommodate the size of the light bulb holder. The base is designed to fit your standard desk base while also having a removable plaque for customization. There is an articulation joint within the base that allows for 360 degree rotation for flexibility in the design and movement of the light. The linkages allow for adjustability of the lamp. We can manipulate it in any direction using the springs and using the connection points to direct the light source wherever you would like. The bars themselves are thick enough to support the weight of the lamp and they also have a wiring cavity to allow for support of the electrical components without having them exposed. Uh, one of the emphases of our project was in tolerancing and validation. Um, for this project itself, one of the key components that we had to focus on was the base attachment here. Uh, many of the other components, since they're kind of a mirrored design, you can attach them from both sides without having to worry about tolerances between them. But as can be seen here, since this one is combined, both of these walls here are attached to the base attachment at the bottom, um, we had to focus on providing uh, sufficient tolerancing so that we could fit these arms within this attachment. Uh, to em another emphasis on this project was um, to show the kind of the capabilities of the different materials you can use. As mentioned previously, to start with the lampshade, we started with just a uh, translucent PET G. Um, from there, we can go to here. This is chroma strand for these two components which is kind of just a high-end ABS. In addition, we also have these connectors as well as these rails in ABS, both black and white. Um, and then down here, we have man magnetic um, iron PLA. We purchased nuts, bolts, and springs from Ace Hardware that keep the rods securely intact with the connections and allow for easy movement of the rods themselves. Um, for the base connection, we melt pressed in a hex nut using a soldering iron and we did it on the base connection as well as the base itself, right near the articulation joint. Uh, the hex nuts and the threaded rod were purchased from McMaster Car, and they allow those two to be firmly connected while still being able to maintain the 360 degree uh, movement. Various finishes were done um, just to provide different surface finishes for the part itself. Um, for the base here, as well as the base connector and these attachments here, acetone was a Applied. Um, for all of the white components, it was brushed on. For the base itself, 
Um, during the brushing process, we noticed that it was kind of turning the black ABS a gray color. So uh, acetone was actually poured on to achieve this finished scene here. Um, in addition, up here, after the acetone was applied, we sanded it for just a smoother finish. And then um, kind of the final feature that we have here is for the logo itself. This was done with, as mentioned previously, magnetic iron PLA um, to achieve the finished scene. The part was soaked in bleach for 12 hours. Um, which caused it to have a rusted finish. We learned some lessons throughout the um, process of our project. One of them being we would want to have a better finalized design and integration of the components before printing. We went through a few different um, iterations of each part in order to get the desired output. And we'd like to minimize that in the future by just having a better plan of how the parts will come together. We'd also like to be sure to always reserve the print time ahead of time so that we are prepared and can get our parts done in time and read the manufacturer's suggestions for printing times. We had an issue with um, one of the parts with the z-axis being too high and having the head pr um, pushing into it and so we had to um, reprint the part so it caused us a little bit of a setback in our timeline and also in our material. We'd also like to be sure to have a great idea of what we're going to do for post-processing and to do them immediately after the print so that um, we don't have any parts that end up broken because they needed um, an acetone finish to help them stay together. Um, and again, in order to have this move a little bit smoother, next time we would have a more finalized plan and design. We'd also set the standards for design units. We had six different group members all designing parts um, originally by themselves, and that caused us to have uh, inconsistencies in the units across the parts. So in order to mitigate that, we would try to set a standardized um, unit and scale so that we can um, just put the part in and print it off right away. We'd also just like to have a set plan and a set uh, timeline to help make the process streamlined and be able to produce this a lot faster. This is the lamp that we created. If you'd like to print your own lamp, feel free to look us up on Thingiverse and download the files and use whatever materials you want to print your own. We would like to uh, thank Dr. Prowl for um, his guidance as our professor through the course um, this semester as well as the idea to product lab at CSU for the use of their extrusion printers. Party lift! Yeah! Party lift!